deposition of Romulus Augustulus in the year 476 was viewed by most people at the time as nothing more than the reunification of the Roman Empire under the Emperor Zeno, who was ruling out of Constantinople. The Hunnic general who deposed the young Romulus Augustulus by the name of Odoacer ruled in the name of Zeno, minted coins with Zeno's inscription and image on them, and ruled with a title given to him by the emperor in Constantinople. The coins minted at the time had the inscription on them, Invicta Roma Eterna, the unconquered eternal Rome. And the poets of the time, like Claudian, Symmachus, Macrobius, all talked about the undying, undefeatable Roman Empire. Now, it was hard to ignore the fact that barbarians were everywhere within the bounds of the empire at the time. The pagan apologists were saying that the barbarians had come as punishment for abandoning the old gods. The Christian apologists said the barbarians were there as punishment for the continuing sin of idolatry. But there was one voice of sanity at the time, and that was the Christian writer Salvian who, during the time of the deposition of Romulus Augustulus, was quite blunt about it. He believed the empire was already dead. He said, the Roman commonwealth is extinct, or at least drawing on its last breath. Salvian, however, was a rare voice in the 5th century AD. Now, there were numerous authors who were blaming specific emperors for specific bad decisions, but the deposition of Romulus Augustulus was probably looked upon at the time as a non-event. It made little difference in Constantinople who ruled in the West, neither did it amongst the Germans who were traversing all over the western part of the empire. And as far as the Romans were concerned, what difference here? Another barbarian general has taken imperial Roman government into his own hands. There's a good possibility that in the year 476, nobody had realized that the empire had fallen. In fact, it was not until the 6th century that chroniclers in Constantinople consecrated the date 476 as the terminal date of the Roman Empire in the West. And they did this so that the Emperor Justinian could launch his reconquest to try and get back some of the Germanic lands that had been taken from imperial rule. 476 is the last time a Roman emperor ruled in the western part of the Roman Empire from a capital in the western part of the Roman Empire. Now, as you know, a man called the Roman Emperor will continue ruling in Constantinople until 1453, when the Turkish Sultan Mehmet II conquers that city. And the title King of the Romans will not be usurped in the West until the year 800, when Charlemagne is crowned King of the Romans. Now, it should be noted, an event we have already discussed before, that in the year 284, when Diocletian established the Tetrarchy, the rule of the four, he gave and consecrated and sanctioned the idea that the Roman Empire could be divided up that there was not a necessity of one man ruling the entire empire, that the empire could be marked into divisions and given to different men to rule. Well, this was an administrative decision on the part of Diocletian, but it came a permanent division. And this division of the east from the western part of the empire turned into downright hostility. When we look at the paths of the barbarian invasion to the Roman Empire, it is no accident that almost all of the Germanic and Hunnic groups went to the western part of the empire because, in effect, the emperor in Constantinople was bribing them to go west and to attack the western part of the empire. So, in essence, the history of Rome since 284 AD was joint rule in a divided empire. And remember, on the last page of your brochure, you have the list of the joint and single emperors ruling over the empire. Well, in lieu of a united empire, what survived was the myth of Rome, the idea of Romanitas, that the Christian monk Bede so eloquently expressed in the year 700 that the empire was still standing. We should look at the date 476, as the final aria in the opera of the dissolution of Roman governmental authority in the West. And then, of course, there was the tragic encore by Justinian in his attempt to reunite the entire empire. So the question for us this morning becomes, 
what caused the dissolution of Roman governmental authority in the West? Why did the empire fall in the West? <laughs>